Another important concept which you have to understand along with action potential is the refractory period. So every time a single stimulus is applied, you get a single action potential. So there is a duration of time, there is a length of time when the membrane is not responsive to a second stimulus. Usually you give a single stimulus and you get a single action potential. But for a brief amount of time, brief period of time, even if a second stimulus is given, there is no response. So that time is called as the refractory period. So you should know the definition of refractory period. Refractory period is the length of time when the membrane is unresponsive to a second stimulus. Now there are two types of refractory periods, one is an absolute refractory period and other is the relative refractory period. Absolute refractory, it is absolute which means however strong the second stimulus is, there is no response. Okay? Even if the second stimulus is very, very strong also, the nerve does not respond to it. So that is called as an absolute refractory period. But in relative refractory period, if the stimulus is very strong, then it can respond. So that is a relative refractory period. To understand this, again you should draw the graph of an action potential. Okay? So millivolt against millisecond, you have the resting potential minus 70 millivolt. So just draw the curve on action potential. So this is the curve on action potential. The absolute refractory period is the entire of depolarization plus one third of repolarization. So most important thing is it does not respond to a second stimulus, however strong the stimulus is. So the duration is the entire of the depolarization plus one third of the repolarization. Now if you divide it into three parts, one third of it, so something like this. So this will be the absolute refractory period. Okay. Next is the, the entire thing is the relative refractory period. Okay. So during this time, if the stimulus is very strong, even if the stimulus is very strong, the nerve does not respond. Okay. So that is the absolute. Now why is this so? Now you have to think back of your graph or explanation of action potential. Now till this part, if you recollect, you know that the voltage gated sodium channels are open, at threshold it is open. Okay. So if this is the threshold, it is open. It is from here it was in its resting state, it has gone to its activation state and lot of sodium ions have entered in. After that what has happened? Then the inactivation gates are closed. So when the inactivation gates are closed, they are in an inactivated state. So when the sodium channel is in an inactivated state, it is again very difficult to open those channels until it goes back to the resting state. So until this, during the entire absolute refractory period, the sodium channels are said to be in its inactivation state. So it does not respond to a second stimulus. Whereas in relative refractory period what happens, they start going back to their resting state. So you should again be able to recollect that, that sodium voltage, voltage gated sodium channels, they have three states. One is the resting state, then the activated state and inactivated. So during the resting state what is happening? The activation gate is closed whereas the inactivation gate is open. In the activated state the gates are open, both the activated gate as well as the inactivation gate are open. In the inactivation state the inactivation is, gate is closed whereas the activation gate is open. So if you draw a simple diagram like this, if this is the sodium channel, in the resting state what is happening is the activation gate is closed whereas the inactivation gate is open whereas in the activated state what is happening is both the gates are open and that is in the activated state. In the inactivated state, so the activation gate is open whereas the inactivation gate is closed. So these are the three states resting, activated state and inactivated state. Now till here, till the one third, it will be in its inactivated state, after which it will go back again to the resting state. So when it goes back to the resting state, at that point when you give a stronger stimulus, it is very easy for the channels to open and again an action potential to be elicited. That is why in the relative refractory period, they respond to a second stimulus, but the second stimulus should be strong. So you should know the definition of the refractory period.
you should know what are the two types of refractory period there is an absolute refractory period and the relative refractory period you should know what each is the definition of each absolute refractory period is a period when the nerve does not respond to a second stimulus however strong the stimulus is whereas relative refractory period is a period when the nerve responds to a stimulus when it is very strong you should know the ionic basis for under knowing the ionic basis you should know about the voltage gated sodium channel basically if you just write that during absolute refractory period the sodium channels are in an inactivated state that's it that is the answer but you should know how it goes to the inactivation state whereas in relative refractory period the sodium channels are set to go back to their activation state and they can be stimulated or opened again okay